coffee. Coffee is the lifeblood of a redhead and it also may be the lifeblood of your garden if you use it correctly. So today's video, we're gonna look at the science behind whether or not you should use coffee grounds in the garden, if you should put them in the compost, what the benefits are, what the issues may be and everything else in between. So let's get into the video. The reason why we tend to see coffee used so often in the garden is because it's so readily available for not a lot of money. So if you go to Starbucks or if you went to a Tim Hortons, I'm sure you could walk in and ask for their spent coffee grounds and they would have buckets for you and they wouldn't even ask for a single cent. Now, there's that side on the industrial end. And now there's on the personal end of this where at home maybe you brew a lot of coffee or at work you brew a lot of coffee. For me personally, this is about all the coffee I drink nowadays. And many of you have actually commented on how healthy and glowing and happy I look lately. And it is, I believe, partly to do with today's sponsor and that is Ritual Vitamins. So while my yard looks like absolute anarchy because I have no idea how to make containers, empty containers, and storage for the winter look pretty, I myself am just glowing. And I do partly contribute this to changing up my vitamin regimen, if you will. Ritual is having a 40% off site wide sale. This is for Black Friday, Cyber Monday. And if you want to jump on this, I will pop a link down below, give that a click, and you can go get exactly what I'm going to tell you I use. I use three. Well, I use four, but three, I think personally are contributing the most in this moment to what you guys have been seeing transformatively from earlier this year to when basically Ritual started sponsoring me. So the number one is the, the multivitamin and I'm using a prenatal multivitamin and my understanding is, and I'm not a doctor, but my understanding is that uh, women are supposed to be taking prenatals whether they're trying to get pregnant or not because there's a little bit of extra oomph in those multivitamins. So I've been taking the prenatal morning and night. Now the other one I'm taking is the pro and prebiotic. So my tummy is incredibly flat as of late and normally it is very distended and bloated looking and that is because of endo and just gastrointestinal inflammation issues that I do have. And I do find that the pre and probiotic helps to alleviate that despite the fact that maybe I'm not always eating the best because I do travel a lot and um, so because of that I my, my diet can be garbage at times. That's the number two. Now the number three, which I think probably should be next to the multivitamin in how I believe it's benefited me is the anti-stress formula. So this one has ashwagandha being the big one. And this I take just before bed every single night. And it helps me just relax, decompress, get a good night's sleep because when you're weightlifting and you're working out hard, you do need to also rest because all of the repair, the weight loss, the muscle building, all of that takes place during the rest points in your day. So I do also contribute some of my health to the anti-stress formula that I'm using from Ritual. So like I said, if you guys want to try to join me in a glow up, not in your yards if you're in Canada, but a glow up in yourself, <laughs> then click that link down below for 40% off of Ritual Vitamins. And Ritual, I wanna thank you guys once again for sponsoring today's video. I do actually genuinely really like your products and it's they've all ultimately changed my life. So thank you for putting so much science and effort into, into the product itself. Let's get back to coffee. Okay, so we know why we use coffee so often in the garden. And it ultimately comes down to the fact that it is so easily, uh, we can so easily get our hands on it for next to nothing. But outside of that, is there anything when it comes to the soil or to plants in general that can make the use of coffee grounds valuable? Number one is that it does have an interesting array of nutrients. It has both macro and micro. The macro, it is considered a nitrogen over a carbon, despite the fact that it is not green, which is valuable when it comes to composting in particular. And it also actually is high in a number of different micronutrients. Now, all plants in general will have micronutrients in them because there are 17 essential nutrients and the 17 essential nutrients are utilized by all plants. So just naturally plant biomass will have this in there. 
However, you could argue it is a little bit more valuable than just like a urea fertilizer, for example. And the fact that it is considered a green because of how high the nitrogen is. I'm gonna clarify that a little bit before my head gets taken off in the comment section. By high nitrogen, I don't mean like the value is high. It's not heroically high nitrogen value as a fertilizer. What I mean by that is that the nitrogen to carbon ratio. So the nitrogen is higher than the carbon, which makes it a green. A leaf, for example, like a, an outdoor leaf that's fallen down, the reason why that's considered a carbon source is because the carbon is higher than the nitrogen. So I just want to clarify that it has nothing to do with like the nitrogen by volume whatsoever that just because the way I said it, it comes across like that in my opinion, but anyways. We also see some other unique characteristics and number one being the volume of surface area. So you guys know I've spoken about surface area repeatedly because surface area is very important to just the rate in which something decomposes all the way to how microbes or how it benefits microbes and whether it's your compost or your soil. So ultimately speaking, it's just more area for the biofilm to take up space. And the biofilm is where our microbes tend to congregate. And this is why if you watch the egg video, I did mention grinding or increasing the surface area to help expedite the process of decomposition. And this is because when something is ground, it is much faster at decomposing. Four for four, it is cheap if not free, it has a wider range of micronutrients. It is a nitrogen, meaning it is a green in regards to composting and or the nutrient side. And number four is that it has high surface area, which is great for getting more activity when it comes to microbes. But what else is there? Well, the next one is actually that it can help with weed control. Okay, when I say weed control, I mean it is incredibly good at killing plants. And that means all plants because weeds are in the eye of the beholder. A Chinese lantern, for example, some people will find beautiful and other people will find to be a nuisance. And that can go for even clover and a lawn. It's literally objective as to what is a weed. And in this case, if it can kill a weed, it can kill everything. And there's actually been some work and studies done on this. You can do this at home and be your own garden scientist by doing a bioassays test. I can, I'm going to show you how to do a bioassays test when it gets cold out and I'm forced to go back indoors. But regardless, it is a known fact that coffee is toxic to an extent. Now, it could be the caffeine in some cases. It could be just the fact that the coffee itself in that intensity or in a high intensity is just allelopathic in a sense all the way to just the fact that it cakes and this is particularly true for if you do not incorporate it into the substrate and you use it more as a mulch so in the event you use it as a mulch it is great at killing plants because it cakes and it doesn't necessarily allow proper water penetration all the way to the fact that it is altering kind of the chemistry uh, and the productivity of that surface layer the interface of the coffee and the ground. So now we're starting to go downhill when it comes to the benefits of using coffee grounds in the garden. The next one is the fact that people do believe it can help decrease the soil pH. Now this, I heavily encourage you to hit the subscribe button and check out my video that I have coming out later this week on soil pH and how to actually adjust it. But one thing you will very quickly discover in that video is that you need a quite a different pH of the amendment you're using when compared to the soil you're amending. And coffee, coffee grounds, spent coffee grounds in particular, they're pretty neutral despite popular belief. Um, they can vary, but nothing varies in an intense enough side of the scale to actually cause or create any benefit. When it comes to the nutrients itself, the macro and the micronutrients contained within that coffee, it isn't readily available just because you put coffee in your soil or because you top dress with coffee on your soil. Just like anything else organic, it needs to decompose. Now, one of the fastest ways to aid in decomposition and ultimately the release of the macro and the micronutrients of your coffee grounds is to throw them into the compost. At the office, we go through a lot 
lot of coffee. And so what I use is actually a, an electric composter. I put the coffee grounds in and then people's lunch scraps also go in there along with some paper towel or napkins that end up in the lunchroom and it gets ground down and dehydrated. This I then bring home when I get a big enough pile of it and I throw the whole thing into the compost and it is mostly, mostly coffee grounds. I do not put it on my soil. I don't wanna to have to deal with like the allelopathic side of things because it can be very hard to recover our soil once you've put something in like a coffee ground that is very much so in there. It's not like you can leach out the coffee ground she's there once she's there. I don't want to deal with that. I don't want to deal with the fact that my animals spend time in my garden despite me not wanting them to and just caffeine in general is actually pretty toxic to animals so I don't really want them eating or doing anything crazy with that and ultimately I just don't want to deal with the caking and all that sort of stuff. So when it comes to coffee because of the increased surface area the fact that it is high in nitrogen it is perfect to put into your compost and that is where you should put it. And if you wanna know how to compost more quickly, check out this video right here. It is that time of year. I'm gonna to have to quit filming outdoors soon because my cameras are just gonna disintegrate in this cold. My thingies are cold. And also, I don't, Canadians probably understand this, but do you ever get so cold that you can't speak? Cause I definitely get that when my face gets cold. Any users.